Through the generous contribution of Dr. Lewis's family, we're very fortunate to be able to share with you these timeless recordings of Dr. M. W. Lewis, a self-realized American yogi. Dr. Lewis was Paramahansa Yogananda's first American disciple and dearest personal friend. The wisdom Dr. Lewis imparts through these teachings will give you a dynamic and practical insight into the ancient science of yoga as taught by Paramahansa Yogananda. This lecture's title is, Does Hell Really Exist? and was delivered in Hollywood, California on March 28, 1954. After that beautiful song, we will talk to the subject this morning. Does hell really exist? <coughs> but still, we should realize that it is God's consciousness. This is only a dream, this is no different. Between the good things of life, such as this song, and the place and the state of consciousness we call Hades, hell. I notice in the dictionary we have two definitions of hell. The first is this, the place or state of punishment for the wicked after death. I don't think we have to wait that long. Because the second one says this, any place or condition of misery or wickedness. And so in discussing this subject this morning about whether hell really exists, I'm going to speak of it in the light of the second definition. That hell is really any place or condition of misery or wickedness. Before I am finished, I will say a word or two about the place the wicked go after death. So let us approach the subject in a practical way, in a pragmatic way, and we must realize, if we do it that way, that hell is a state of consciousness, and that that state of consciousness <laughs> can exist right here and now. We do not have to wait until we're through with this plane. In fact, under certain conditions, I doubt if it can be any worse. So hell, let us say, is a state of consciousness. Now, <coughs> this state of consciousness can exist and does exist in three realms. That's the important thing to understand. It exists in the outward realm of waking consciousness, physical consciousness. It exists in the subtle or astral consciousness within. And it exists in the causal consciousness, or the mental consciousness that produces the astral and the physical. So don't think that hell exists only in our consciousness. No, that is not so. <clears throat> we can illustrate this easily by taking a condition of pain, severe pain, excruciating pain in physical consciousness. Those who have that know that there cannot be any worse hell than that right here in this consciousness. So hell can exist and does exist in physical or outward consciousness. Now you go within. In the astral realm, and you have had, I'm sure, certain nightmares and dreams wherein you saw those things right before you. You felt the pain. You had the fear. And that state of consciousness in the astral is just as real as the state of outward consciousness. Is it not? You look back to the nightmares you had, or the terrific dreams that were disagreeable, hellish in nature, so to speak. So hell exists. In that second stage of consciousness, the astral, or the subtle consciousness, are going just a little further, into the causal realm, the mental realm. Perhaps you've had glimpses of 
of that realm and seen a little bit of heaven, or felt it rather, <coughs> then you realize that you have lost it. I understand that is what happens after death. Those who have neglected to find the realization of oneness with God get a little glimpse of heaven. Now don't you think when that slipped away that the anguish that comes in the mental realm or causal realm will certainly constitute hell? And you know mental suffering that we have sometimes is more excruciating than physical suffering. And so there you have the state of hell, state of consciousness known as hell or Hades exists not only in the physical realm, but in the other two realms as well. Hell is a state of consciousness. Now I have a few illustrations I'd like to give you about whether hell really exists or not. I remember the case of one devotee. He was in such a restless state, he just was in a terrible trip. And he started on a trip just a few miles from Los Angeles, a hundred, fifteen hundred miles away. He got part way and he got so jittery in, in such a state, he called up the master. He told me, he says, I couldn't hold the phone, I couldn't hold the receiver. I was so jittery, so terribly upset. 